I'm just casting on in an area that's going to be stitched over later with a very heavy line of cruel stem. And I'm now going to work this outline along here. So I've worked all the background and now I'm going to work the outline. I always prefer to do it this way round, just working from the background to the foreground. So in this leaf, the top edge is flipped over. So I'm going to start at the bottom here. So to start with for a reverse chain, you come up in uh, just about a quarter of an inch down from the top of your stitching line and then go down in the same hole and then lay that loop away from you and come up in the top of that loop and then couch it down and that's just your little foundation stitch sort of lazy daisy and then come down another quarter of an inch because that's the size of these little chains and you can either take your needle and pass it under the chain with the pointy end first or you could reverse it and push it that way so I'm going down in the same hole and I'm making little stitches that look like little teardrops. You can just use your um, finger, I'm using my ring finger, to just push the linen up so that it's just slightly raised. And I'm actually going to get rid of that rather annoying waist knot in a minute that's just sitting there waiting for me to catch it. I always do my casting on about at least a centimetre, half an inch away from where I'm starting. So I'm just going to snip that off out of the way. And you'll notice there are no little waist knots lying around. I always just keep those tidied as I work my way around because I find them very distracting. So the alternative to going pointy end first is that you take your needle, just push your linen from underneath with your ring finger and just dig down so that you're really almost digging like that into the fabric and you'll hear a little bump bump and I find that rather satisfying. Then down in the same hole and I'm just going to take you as far as the corner and then show you how to go round, well how I go round the corner and my stitches are really based on pieces that I own, antique pieces that I'm going to show you in another video and um, pieces I've studied in museums and castles and, and once you've been stitching for a while you can think aha that's how they got away with that and in the past of course in the 17th century cruel work was mainly worked by professionals so it's rather interesting when you get to the late 19th century by the time you got there um, it was mainly amateurs although there are some professional pieces um, from workshops but lots and lots of uh, amateur pieces are around and I own those as well and this design is actually an arts and crafts design it's the running hair from a pelmet that I'll show you in the next video right I'm going to now take my needle I'm just worked up to the pointy bit there and I'm going to take my needle through and then back down to create the foundation stitch for the next corner. Now, you can come up through that point again and just take that back down. So whichever way you do it, you can just literally start again on that corner with a foundation stitch. And of course, nobody is looking at this with a magnifying glass. So honestly, crew work is forgiving and when you make little mistakes in it, it looks charming. So please don't keep pulling out and pulling out. But if you do want to pull something out, don't you reuse that bit of wool. It really doesn't like being dragged out in a fury. So treat it well and it will reward you by looking rather beautiful.